I want to talk on forgiveness. And I bet that there is no person here who, was, who did not feel a pinch or be hurt by somebody else. And as I speak, it may be a fresh experience that you have just had, maybe recently. Let me read to you the Word of God first, and then we'll get into the topic. Jesus speaking. So, watch yourself. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against, sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you and says, I repeat, forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in front of the field, come along now and sit down and to eat? Would he not rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink, after that you may eat and drink? Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are worthy servants. We have only done our duty. Do you believe this sentence? If people would forgive and let go of the anger, majority of their problems would go away. Amen. Yeah. Think about it. So many psychiatrists and psychologists and counselors out there receive their clientele. And the major problem that they have is that deep down, they have encountered deep, deep hurts and they have never properly dealt with. There was never ever a proper, proper forgiveness to have taken place. And it has become so point that God infected and infected them and infected others. One of the major problems that we have today so Jesus is teaching us what it means to be a disciple. And to be a disciple means that you forgive. And the choice is, obviously, to forgive or not to forgive. So Jesus would say, always forgive. And the disciples would say, oh, help us increase our faith. It's just too much what you are asking us. Unless you increase our faith, we just can't do it. Here are the three questions we are going to look at. Why do we need forgiveness? Number two, what is forgiveness? And number three, how do we receive forgiveness? Okay. Well, let's start from the beginning. Think about the experience. Think about the moment. Somebody hurt you. When it happened, what did you pay your attention to straight after it happened? Where did your mind go? Where did your heart go? I want you to see that the very first thing that Jesus says when the hurt and pain from the other comes onto you, the very first thing that needs to happen is this. Watch yourself. He says, pay attention not to the wrongdoer first, 
Pay attention first to yourself. In other words, I have been hurt by the other. And I am now to pay attention to myself first. And then to the wrongdoer second. Why? Why? Because you and I need to watch how we respond to the hurt that just took place. It's no wonder that Jesus is saying, watch yourself after you have been hurt. Pay attention to yourself before you pay attention to the wrongdoer. Do you get it? The reason why is because you can easily be blinded by unforgiving spirit. Watch yourself. Why is he saying that? Because he knows that you can go spiraling down into the unforgiving spirit. So therefore Jesus shouts when you're hurt, watch yourself. Pay attention to what happens inside of you. If only we would listen to the Master. I have actually not seen this before. The very first sentence is almost like a key. Watch yourself. When brother hurts you. There's a beautiful text that goes along with what we are talking about in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 15, when it says, See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. I'm not sure it says. That no root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble, and by it you may become defiled. Do you get the, the weight of this statement? So what Paul is saying and what Jesus is saying basically is that unforgiving, unforgiven wrong and anger operates at two levels. Observe carefully. At the level of your roots. When somebody hurts you, Jesus said, watch yourself. Because there is a tendency that it will come to the root of who you are. An unforgiving spirit will develop at the core of your being. And then how it will manifest itself is about in your attitude and your behavior to the, towards that person. And you will be defiled as a result. Do you follow me? Do you understand? When Jesus says, watch what? Who? Watch yourself? Why? Because there's straight away a tendency within the human heart that at the root level, you will develop unforgiving spirit, which then will turn out into attitude and behavior of unforgiveness towards the other. Unless we are very careful that we fully forgive, recognizing the depth of hurt, unforgiving spirit will affect us at the root level, at the attitude, and we will be defiled. You see that all the time. Two people are not talking with each other. You can see that they are both defiled. Well, that's not means words about it. It's true. Am I right? Master is telling us, watch yourself. Watch that it doesn't seep into your roots. Watch that it is not manifested in your attitudes and in your behavior. If you have decided to follow the master, listen to him. This is not for faint-hearted, but it is for every disciple of Christ. So that's why I wanted these doors to be closed. Because this is not easy. This is not easy. 
So, this is not to deny the depth of hurt you have experienced. Everybody does. And you and I should recognize the depth of hurt we have experienced. But if you do not forgive properly, you will be controlled by unforgiving spirit and feelings that develop as a result of it. You will be in bondage. And you will have no control over it. Watch yourself. If you don't watch yourself, you experience a bitter fruit. What is the fruit that you will experience? Self-pity. Poor me. Sister did this to me. Or you become cynical. Or you become joyless. Or resent this person. Or bitter towards them. Or ultimately you become hateful towards that person. That's a fruit. So who are you to watch yourself against? Anyone? Your parents? Those who are closest to you are in the greatest danger of you developing unforgiving spirit towards them. To become self-pitiful, cynical, resentful, bitter towards your mom and dad, towards your child, towards your boyfriend, towards your spouse. Those closest to you are the ones towards which you could develop these fruits. Because the ones that we are closest to, we can hurt the most. And towards them, we can develop straight away unforgiving spirit. So close the doors. This is not easy. But there is nothing that this world can offer you to solve the problem of forgiveness. But what Master offers to us will always work. Will always work. So, forgiveness, what does it mean? Really, really, what does it mean to forgive? What does it mean to forgive? I want to talk about three things as far as forgiveness is concerned. These are very practical. Number one, identify with the one who wronged you. What? Okay, that's what I said. Identify with the one who wronged you. We'll come back to that. Number two, on inside, pay the debts of the wrongdoer. Number two. Number three, seek good on the one who wronged you. Amen. These are hard words, but they are not mine. Watch yourself. Let's go one by one. Look what it says. If your brother sins against you. Yeah, do you see that? What it doesn't say is this. Jesus doesn't say, if that man who used to be your brother but because he sinned against you, he isn't anymore. However, if he repents, then he will be your brother again. He says, if your brother sins against you, in, a, in other words, it means even after he has sinned against you, he's still your brother. Do you get that? But let's come back to the idea of
what does it mean to identify with the one who wronged you? Which is really tough. Really tough. One of the first things human heart wants to do after we have been wronged is to discontinue to accept them as brother, colleague, neighbor, sister, spouse. They no longer are. You're not my brother. If you could do this to me, you no longer are my brother. If you could do this to me, you're no longer my sister. If you did this to me, you no longer this. That's it. It's finished. Jesus says, if your brother sins, that means that they are still your brother. Unforgiving spirit means, I want you to, do, to see this very clearly. If you have your pen, please take this. This is very important. And write it down. Unforgiving spirit means two things. I exclude the one who wronged me from the inside circle. So the one who, who hurts me, I exclude that person from inside circle. He's no longer part of the inside circle. He's excluded. Okay? That's number one what we do. What we do. Everybody typically does that. And number two what we do, I exclude myself from the company of sinners. And you know what we say? I could never do that. So what we do, we exclude them from the inside circle, we also exclude ourselves from the company of sinners. I'll give you an example. You, didn't you say, I said it many times, I would never do that. And you know what? Maybe it's true. But you would never do that, but you would do something else. So you are never ever excluded from the company of sinners. It's just a different kind of sin. But it's sin nevertheless. You might be technically right that you would never do that, but you would do something else. So this is the, the heart of what it means to have unforgiving spirit. I exclude the one who hurt me from the inside circle, and I exclude myself from the company of sinners. Just the other day, it was two weeks ago, I was driving and going to pick up my son. And I was listening to a sports commentary on radio. And these two sport commentators talked about cricket, because now this is a cricket season. And they talked about two a very good Australian cricketers, Dave Warner and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and Steve Smith. And they were saying that they were ready to forgive Steve Smith because he's a good boy and he was just caught in the whole thing, but they could never forgive David Warner. He's a cheat and he will always stay cheat. He could never be forgiven. And he says, we could never do this. So what they do, they exclude themselves from the company of sinners and they exclude him from an inside circle. You and I, if we are to death, deal a death blow to unforgiving spirit, we are never to exclude the other from an inside circle and exclude ourselves from the company of sinners. This is hard. If you have any hope of forgiving that other person or people, you have to get rid of roots. Then you have to think of similarities between you and the wrongdoer. That's his weakness. And that's his sin. And that's his problem. But I have mine too. He's a mixture of good and bad. So am I. 
Don't exclude them from community. And don't exclude yourself from the community of sinners. That was hard. That was hard. But this one becomes even harder now. I can't see anyone leaving the place. I don't know if this is good or bad. But this, this might happen now. You are to pay debt rather than make him or her pay the debt. If you are to deal with the unforgiving spirit, and if you truly want to forgive as Jesus commands us, and as he says, watch yourself, this is what you and I need to do. You and I are to pay the debt after we have been hurt. In economic terms, to forgive is to cancel debt. Isn't that true? I don't have to pay. That's awesome news, isn't it? In economic terms, to forgive is to cancel the debt. In relational or spiritual terms, to forgive is to cancel the debt. Cancel the debt. What does it mean? Who is to pay? Remember that there is no way that somebody is not to pay. Somebody still has to pay. Somebody still has to pay. And it has to be you. By being hurt, you pay. Only when we are prepared to pay debt of our debtors are we able to conquer. Sense of humiliation, resentment, bitterness, hate, anger, entitlement or revenge. Only when we are prepared to pay debt ourselves. What do I mean? Look at the Lord's Prayer. What does it say? Forgive us our debts as... So who should pay the debt? Do you? What types of debt? What types of debt? There are two types. Literal or legal. And internal and emotional. I want you to think about it. When somebody hurts you, think about this now with me, please. There is a sense that he or she owes me pain I went through, so I want him or her to go through the same thing. Do you get that? So she hurts me, and I'm paying the price of that hurt. Now what I want typically is that he or she experiences exactly the same as I have. Isn't that true? Yes. You're shy. How do we typically go about it? This is how we typically go about it. I react. I yell and scream at them. Yeah? Or I ruin them. And I ruin their reputation. And I'm bell hand, hell bent on it. I become cold towards them. I see them but as if I I see through them, I don't see them. I gossip about them. This is the way how we deal with our hurts. I'm paying, but I want them to pay. And they will feel the same. And Jesus says, forgive your debtors. Pay the debt yourself.
Do you really need to listen to him? What they did to me now is going to bite them. I want them to go through pain, then I will feel better because they owe me. It's this my emotional death. This payment is there to pay to us is emotional debt. And if we insist on it, it will badly affect us. How? We already spoke about this. Resentment, anger, hate, coldness, bitterness, distance, gossip. These will be the fruits. These will be the fruits. So what is the alternative? Forgive us our debts as what we forgive our debtors. Cancel or pay the debt emotional yourself. Inside you must destroy the debt of pain by paying it yourself. Here's the most important question. How can I do it? How can I do it? How can I do it? Here is how you can do it. Ready? Write it down. When I'm tempted to yell, scream, ruin them, be called, gossip about them, what should you do? Don't do it. Simple. Just don't do it. Can't be more simple than that. Just don't do it. Absorb it. This hurts. Just decide that you pay it. I will not yell. I will not hurt. I will not gossip, I will not be cold, I will pay. That costs. But you decide that you will watch yourself. This is not easy, but it's the right thing to do. The person sits against you seven times, you forgive them seven times. You can't do it, do this if you do not choose to pay, but rather make them pay. And this is my prayer that this be your prayer and our prayer. If you choose, you may even repeat after me. I will grant forgiveness to pay that to one who hurts me and will refuse to make them pay emotional debt. I understand that this will hurt me, but it will also make me free. And the last one. You seek the good for the wrongdoer. Until now, all has been happening, all that has been happening was inside of you. Here is where you active or where you become active towards the other person. If you don't forgive the person and you do, you go to face them. It's not going to work. You will be after revenge, but if you forgive, there is a chance you will get justice. Because if you come and face the wrongdoer and you say, tell them that you, that you were hurt, but that you have forgiven them and you choose to pay a price and seek good for them, there's every chance the things will be settled. If you seek revenge, it will never be settled. How is, it, how is this even possible for us to do? Disciples said, we don't have enough faith. They understood the weight of this and they said, we can't do this. This is too much. Give us, Jesus, more faith. We need more faith. It's just impossible. Humanly speaking, this is impossible. That's why Jesus said these two parables. The one of the owner and landlord and servant. A landlord comes to the servant who worked the whole day and says, it's not time to relax. Do you get this? I will relax and you continue to serve. Do you get what is this is all about? Do you get it? At the time of Jesus, and especially in the time of the Old Testament, 
If you were so indebted that you could no longer pro provide for your family, you would give yourself to the other household that was more well off and you became a servant in that household. And you would work the whole jolly day. You're not a slave, but you were a servant. The reason why is because you wanted to pay debt that you owed. So you would work the whole day. And after the day was finished, Jesus says, typically in, 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 in that kind of life, you still don't sit. You come back and you still work at the table. You serve at the table. You just don't sit and ask for me. No, 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 you still work. That's what he's saying. That's what these servants were doing. And the reason was that for that was that they were paying off their debt. If you want people who wronged you to pay you back an emotional debt, then you remember that you are just a servant. What Jesus is saying, every Christian is a servant. Okay? Why is this so? Because you are already indebted to the Master. You and I are indebted to God. You are indebted to Master and you are not going to go around demanding payment from others. You are just to continue being servants. So therefore you are asked of the Master to forgive. Because you, you yourself are indebted to Master. Do you get that? But even the second parable is even better. King and servant who hold owed him a huge debt and king counsels his debt. You know that parable, don't you? The king answer, uh, cancels the huge debt to a servant and he sets him free. And this servant goes to somebody who owed him very little money and he choked him and he says, pay me back. That's the essence of Jesus' parable. When Jesus on the cross said, it is finished, what he basically said, I paid it all. Amen. And I forgave. We owe him a huge debt. We owe him a huge, huge debt. He is the owner. Yet he became a servant who worked hard to pay our debt. So how can we possibly go around demanding a payment to us for emotional debt and develop this unforgiving spirit and go gossiping around, slandering, being bitter and in change of unforgiving spirit when Father when Jesus forgave us everything, today we celebrate communion. Incredible debt to pay on the part of owner who became servant and earned forgiveness for us all. How could we go around and demand a payment others. Jesus says, forgive and get rid of the roots of bitterness. This was hard sermon, but I know of no better way how to heal the ills of society around us, but to forgive. Pay that yourself. Because the master we follow did exactly the same. Culture will not teach you this. School that you go to or you went to will never teach you this. But the master Jesus will. He says that this is a hard saying. But it is a proper time to speak about it in the face 
of partaking of the emblems of Jesus. May God bless us as we ponder on this and we make a decision that we will pay the debt, which is insignificant in the face of huge debt that Jesus paid for us. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for huge debt you paid for me personally. Lord, may my understanding deepen ever so more. May my heart soften ever so more in the face of huge sacrifice that you made on the cross of Calvary. So much so that it will cultivate a forgiving spirit within me towards everyone else. May this be not only my prayer, but prayer of each one of us as we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.